So this is pretty perfect. These are two new boxes that I just got in the mail that we're going to first start with opening up and then we're going to start with the video. All right, so I've been getting into like having one backpack that's like an everyday carry where I have all the necessities that I kind of need to get through my day and to like get my work done from anywhere. The idea is essentially that I would have one backpack wherein I could have all the different pockets that are specific to me. So only pockets that I would actually use. So not too many pockets, not too few pockets. And for this, I've done some research and uh, come up with this backpack, which I think it's gonna be really good. I think this is perfect for the topic of like coding gadgets that I use every day. And one of those items is a backpack, of course, because you need to be able to carry your stuff around. And this, I guess, is like more useful for students. A lot of times I'm working remotely and I need to be able to pack my stuff into a backpack. Ideally, I would be able to pack everything into a backpack and hopefully this will be the backpack. All right, so this is a Filson Dryden Otter Green backpack. This was the one that I came up with based on the needs that I figured out that I had. One big thing is, of course, I needed to be able to fit in a laptop, which this one probably should be able to fit. Then to have like certain items in certain pockets that I use frequently and that I would want to carry with me. For instance, like a small little keyboard, like a really thin one that I might use if I'm like writing stuff on the go with just my phone, if I'm not taking my laptop with me. And also just have pockets for like other things, like maybe carrying a spare mouse or something like that, and water bottles, uh, camera stuff. And this seemed to fit my needs perfectly. I needed a couple like small pockets on the outside, which we have here. We have one quite deep pocket on the front. And then we have a smaller pocket here that you can fit some like stuff that you get to very easily. And then you have like a main compartment, which is pretty roomy and that's what I wanted to. I wanted to have ideally be able to fit all of my like everyday carry stuff into the smaller pockets and then have the big pocket be available for just like if I want to throw in some clothes or like a um, toiletries bag or something like that, I'll be able to put that into this pocket, the big one, or whatever else I might need for that specific day. So yeah, this is what I'm going to try out now as my like everyday carry sort of backpack. Uh, hopefully it will work. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know if this is going to be like a long intro for this video, but these are just some thoughts that I've been going through lately for like everyday carry stuff and also like coding gear and things that I use on a daily basis. So let's get started with the actual video and coding gear that I use on a daily basis. All right, so let's start this off with item number one, which is a laptop rest. And this is one of those things that I think is super useful, but it's also like often overlooked. This is really nice to have, especially if you're like at home on the couch, coding something out and also having on like your favorite show in the background. This is really useful to have. This one is called Lap Desk and is made by Huanu something. Uh, not sure how to say it, but if you want to get one, there's a link to it in the description, along with all the other items that I'll be talking about. A key feature to look for when selecting a laptop rest is that you want this separation underneath for airflow. This really helps with your lap overheating. If you've ever used a pillow for this laptop rest, then you know what I'm talking about. Your legs and other valuables can get absolutely scorched after a long session. And something that I like and dislike is the mouse pad. I personally rarely use a mouse, but for me this area works really well for putting my phone on, since there's a little bit of leather there and also a plastic edge around it. it kind of stops my phone from sliding off the board as soon as I change position but this also makes the whole construction slightly off balance which means that you can't have it centered on your lap but you need to have a slight overhang on the right side in order for your laptop to be centered in front of you not a huge thing but still slightly annoying it also has a phone stand that can be nice if you're building apps and want to test them out on the device I haven't used it though all right and the next item is a USB-C hub I like this one because it allows me to use the other USB-C ports of my laptop 
and we all know how valuable those are. Plus, it's a bit more flexible compared to the classic one that sits right onto the laptop side. More ports is always useful, so I highly recommend that you get one of these if your laptop has a USB-C port. And if not, then I still recommend getting a regular USB hub of some kind. These ports fill up so fast that it's always useful to have more and definitely a worthwhile investment. Now the next item on our list is a USB stick which is super useful for programmers and it's one of those things that you can use for a lot of things but what I use it for is live booting into Linux. This is one that I think every programmer should try at least once. Get yourself a keyring USB stick and a Linux distro of your choice and you'll be able to test it out and see what you think of it. You can probably find an old USB stick laying around your house from back in the day when two gigabyte felt like two petabyte feel today. I have tons of these and this particular one is the one that I keep on my keys at all times. Mostly because it feels cool but if you decide to go for Linux as your daily driver OS then you can also set that up the way that you want and then put your distro the way that you've set it up onto your USB and now you can live boot into your custom setup of Linux from anywhere. Oh and also this video is sponsored by Blinkist. Blinkist is an app that takes the best tips and tricks and insights from thousands of different non-fiction books and condenses it down into 15 minutes that you can either read or listen to. Most of the books that we read, we read in order to find the few key tools and takeaways that are in there that can help us. So with Blinkist, you get incredibly high information density. I've come to use Blinkist daily. Anytime I'm commuting, when I'm at the gym, when I'm making food, I'll be listening to a book on Blinkist. I've used Blinkist in different ways. I've listened to books that I've read in the past in order to get reminded of the lessons that are in there and a recent one is the Lean Startup. I also use it for books where I need the information fast. If I'm working on a project and I find a book that can help I use Blinkist to quickly get the lessons from that book and it's become a great tool for me so I really cannot recommend this enough. The first 100 people that click the link in the description will get one week of unlimited access completely free and you can of course cancel at any time. You You'll also get 25% off a full membership. So again, definitely sign up for this. There's a link in the description. The fourth item on my list is a notebook. This is one of those things that you would probably think that it doesn't really make sense to write out code by hand because really what would make sense is writing it out in the text editor because that way you'd be able to just test the code straight away and find a faster route to the solution. But what I've found is that there's something about like writing code out by hand that just makes it click more easily for me. So there's so many times when I've been like stuck on a problem for ages and then I've decided to take out the old notebook or paper and pen and just try to write out the code by hand and try to figure it out through like writing it. Most of the time I actually end up figuring out the solution by doing that which is I can't really explain that but there's something about just writing code out by hand which is why I think a notebook is super useful. My notebook of choice is a no brand regular old black one that you'll find in pretty much any store that you go into. Black notebooks are simply the best in my opinion. Simple yet also noteworthy. Welcome to Pun City. I also like to go for lined paper because I feel like it's a good balance between the structure of squared paper and the freedom of blank paper. I feel like I may have put too much thought into this. All right, next we have headphones. And for this, I basically use two different options for two different times. I won't really use noise cancelling headphones unless I'm home alone. They're really good when listening to music and or consuming some form of content. And if you've never used noise cancelling headphones on an airplane, then wow, you need to do that because I feel like that's where you get your money's worth for sure. However, when I'm not home alone, I tend to avoid them. And this is because they cancel out outside noise to the point where I feel like I'm an easy prey to jump scares. So for those situations, I go for the regular old AirPods. Small and easy to carry with me and also work really well at the gym. No cords was a game changer for me when these came out. All right, so now we have an item for all of you guys who are working a lot from your laptop, and that is a portable monitor. This was sent to me by the nice people over at Lipao or Lipao, I'm not sure how to say that name. But this is a really useful device, especially if your main machine is a laptop, then it can be super useful to have a separate screen of some kind, especially a portable one that you can take with you on trips. The footprint of it is really, really small, which means that it's super easy to bring it with you in a backpack. And therefore, this is one gadget that I think a lot of people will enjoy. 
All right, and now I just wanted to mention my phones of choice. And this is my Apple device, which is the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And then for my Android device, I'm using a OnePlus 6. I have one Apple device and one Android device, basically because that way I can test out apps on both devices and get a feel for how the UX is on each. Now, the OnePlus is my old phone and the iPhone is my new one. So I didn't buy one of each just to have. However, I did buy the iPhone because the OnePlus 6 camera was really bad, but in hindsight, it wasn't too important because I rarely use my phone camera anyway. I thought I would be using the iPhone camera for Instagram photos, but the difference wasn't big enough compared to my actual camera, which is the Canon EOS R. So I just don't end up using it. Overall, I like the OnePlus way more than my iPhone. So I've been going back to it periodically. All right, so now for the final item of this long ass list which is my keyboard my current keyboard of choice which is the Epo Maker SK71 with Gatoron brown switches figured I had to mention my keyboard even though I know I've been talking about keyboards a lot lately the keyboard is arguably the most important gadget so here it is and this one was sent to me by Epo Maker to test out and I really like it the color of the keycaps is really nice and goes really well with my new setup and there are also some high quality keycaps I've been using it now for about a month and I feel like I can type a lot faster on this than my previous Ducky 12 SF for some reason. And overall, it's just a really solid build. The one thing that I personally don't really need is the numpad. I never use it, but the keyboard is so small anyway that it doesn't really bother me. Although if I update, then I may go for the one that they make in the same color scheme, but without the numpad. All right, so that's it. Those are my favorite coding gadgets. And I hope I was able to show you something new that you hadn't seen before, or that you hadn't thought of before. Or maybe that I was able to show you something that you knew of, but maybe a new version of something that you feel like you may want to try out in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.